Right, here's your uh, feedback video on your progressional exam. Mostly well done. Uh, once you've drawn their target create, again, that's what you're all aiming for. Uh, two above, which is even better. Uh, and three, one grade below, uh, which isn't too bad, really, uh, for this stage in the course. But uh, I can, this mistakes are made a bit sloppy, and maybe a bit more revision, a bit more reflection in the exam technique that could very easily be eradicated. So I'll very quickly go through each uh, question here. And then it'll be your activity to have a little reflection, make your own targets, access and the materials in the Dropbox and get the most out of this uh, paper really. Uh, again, first two questions, definition questions. Uh, first one, entrepreneur. Uh, definition and an example to secure the marks. Again, I needed to hear something about risks or factors reduction there. And the second question there uh, was a calculate four mark question. Kind of a strange one, and I want you to calculate the percentage change. Uh, that's a core part of your uh, elasticity there, so you should know that formula and know how to actually do that. Um, so again, percentage change, change over original. In 2006, uh, it was 900,000, 2013, 6 million. So the change is 5.1, the original was 900,000, and therefore a massive percentage increase of 567. Uh, I don't think many people got that one. So again, uh, you got to practice your math skills, guaranteed questions, 10% uh, of the AS, 20% of the A2. Uh, next question was the demand supply curve, answered much better. Uh, again, you had to uh, decide what was happening here. Advertising, it affects the consumer. Think of your flow chart. It's a demand issue, and it's going to increase it, shift it to the right. Label your axes, label your lines, label your equilibrium point. Uh, again, uh, you've got to practice your demand supply diagrams, core concept. Uh, then into your next question here, your eight mark discuss question. Uh, the benefits of spending £100,000 in advertising campaign. Again, you can see your different levels here. I've tried to annotate and show you how, what the difference is here. Level 3, balance develop fully and contextually. Level 2, if it's one-sided, again, if you're dropping context or explanation in one of your points, you're dropping down here. Um, so again, for get more question, need 2 versus 2. Um, so quite well answered this question. No, it wasn't the worst. Any 2 versus 2 would be valid here. Uh, saying yes, it's a great idea here, raising consumer awareness, make the community aware of what's happening here. It's going to lead to higher profits, fantastic. However, on the other hand, you need to choose an appropriate method of advertising. Uh, there's going to be competition, no denying, there's an opportunity cost of the money. Again, a great key term you can use in many of your answers. Okay, so again, no need for a conclusion on that one. Two versus two, each point scaffolded up with context and explanation. On to the next one. Your next one was your 12 marker. So again, uh, showing you this page first to uh, show you the different levels. Again, you kind of start at the top and you work backwards. So level four, two versus two of conclusion. And if you're lacking anything, you're dropping down. You're working backwards here. Uh, limited evidence, so you're lacking context. You're really in level two there. What you're going to get is five if you just write your answers in textbook. Unfortunately, some people, uh, when they rush, are still forgetting the importance of context. Can I emphasize that, man? Okay. Um, so again, for this one, the question was all by Santander, increasing their interest rates on loans and savings by 2%. How is this going to affect this castle? So again, you got to be the business, be the case study, utilize it. That's what context is all about. They're renovating. They're going to need external finance. They're going to be negatively affected that way. Uh, they've needed to borrow money uh, to fund their uh, renovations after the burning down. You'd be a separate point. Or you could actually put the consumer point there. Uh, people need to borrow money to fund their weddings very often. And again, that's going to have an effect on the business. Uh, again, contextually you can develop that quite easily. However, flip your points and say, oh, actually, not too much big an impact. Uh, it's an income in elastic good. People have been saving all their lives. As I said in your case study, big clue there. Uh, not a big intra impact on demand. Uh, parents have been saved up for many years. Uh, the extent and duration of the change in interest rates 
Uh, again, short versus long term, to bring in that argument. And also, you mentioned it's a price elastic good as well. Okay, people are going to get married irrespective of whatever interest rates are. And you need a very clear conclusion at the end. Uh, again, it's undeniable impact is going to have on this business uh, with their source of finance and also the line that they're in. And then that was theme one. And then section B was based on theme two. But uh, again, similar structures to what we've been doing all year. And um, this one. What was it all about? 1984 cinemas, um, niche cinemas. So what's meant by the term market share? Again, definition, the example. Uh, it's all about your percentage of the pie that you own compared to the pie in total. So the percentage of your total sales compared to the total market there. Uh, so again, definition, example to secure that mark. And then your next question here, again, uh, sometimes you got to do the donkey work, you got to work out the percentage change, quantity of demand, percentage change, and income, that you should say there, made a little mistake. Uh, but that's your YD formula, again, formula, figures, answer. Uh, most people got the formula, some people messed up with the figures, again, you got to practice doing those percentage changes. And then your answer, plus 172, didn't have to give a judgment to get your marks, uh, but again, lots of people correctly labeled it as an income elastic normal good and you could use that information in your next questions uh, your next question here the four marker is actually answered uh, pretty well explain how a recession might impact on a cinema uh, dsle define recession state your impact link it to the cinema chain here and then explain it fully okay uh, so again, usually a recession, doom and gloom, not so good. Uh, but again, you can argue uh, that uh, your explanation could consider the elasticity there. Okay, undeniably, it's income elastic, drastic, good. Okay, normal changes, incomes go down, demand for the product will go down. But again, it's only 1.72, could be worse, could be a bigger number there. And then your next question was your rate marker, your question 2D. Uh, discuss the benefits for small independent cinemas of operating in a niche market. You're evaluating niche markets there. What's good about niche? Uh, I'm sure if I had a set you down before the exam and actually guys to make a list, what's good and bad about niche? And you just said good. Uh, premium prices, price and elastic, uh, increased loyalty, and all of those different aspects. Uh, less competition in a niche market, and then actually what was bad, uh, you could name your points as well, okay, and that there's limited uh, extent in your niche, that if there's enough profit to be made, profit signaling will attract further competition to the market, and uh, in times of recession, it's hard to diversify away from the niche. I've taken that subject knowledge, but applying it to the scenario of small independent cinemas, as you can see in your mark scheme here, and explaining your point fully. So lots of people kind of drifted away from niche. Again, you got to read your question carefully. Interact with your question. Emphasize it. Okay. Some of you guys left me thinking, so, okay, what's this got to do with niche? And um, again, you should understand how that one works. Uh, your next question assess the advantages of inorganic growth for a firm such as Cineworld, inorganic growth, joint ventures, takeovers, and mergers. Um, so, again, you got to look at the market there, give specific, unique, contextual points the good and the bad, uh, rapid growth, expanding market share. You can acquire the brands here, uh, which is quite important in the old cinema business. And you don't have to go through the whole planning permission aspect. And then your however points, 50% um, of all mergers feel uh, kind of a clash in corporate cultures, management styles, leadership styles, uh, diseconomies of scale. It could grow too big here as a 70% uh, oligopoly here. So again, if you want to acquire a competitor, you're going to enter into diseconomies of scale. That's a very specific, unique contextual point to this case study. Okay. And then a clear conclusion, uh, again, I think we'll all appreciate inorganic growth, external growth, it's fast, and it gets rid of your competitors. Okay, justify your stance there. And then, and then we were into our last question, our section C, our cross-theme question. There's always uh, 
a broad question. Uh, it's about the famous Google ad for those old satchels. Uh, interestingly, she can open up a shop in Covent Garden, uh, which she could. Interesting to branch out that way. I think she'd be all right online, really. Uh, you just open yourself up to overheads and fixed costs. Uh, but you had to evaluate the importance of credit for an entrepreneur, uh, such as Miss Dean here. So again, what is credit? It's always going to be in your section C. This nice broad question, um, and then you can bring in as many topics as you can think of. It's your opportunity to show off uh, what you've learned in theme one and theme two. Uh, again, what is credit? Lines of credit. It's money you don't have. Credit. Okay, it's your overdrafts, your loans, your mortgages, it's your bank giving you money and you paying them back over time. And in the current financial climate, credit lines are hard to get. Okay, banks are risk adverse. Uh, but undeniably for an entrepreneur, uh, credit is pretty darn important. Uh, again, it's a level answer. Level four is everything. Okay, it is free versus free, every point in context and explained. And it has a justified recommendation. Okay, level three. Slip down into there, it's on balance. One of your points is invalid, or you're lacking context or explanations, some of your points, or you've given three versus two, or two versus one, or something like that. And if you're in level two, it means you're just giving a textbook answer, you've panicked. Okay, you gotta be disciplined. Limited relevant elements. Okay, you gotta be contextual. Quite a lot of people uh, well, ended up in level two because they didn't give context, maybe timing was an issue, if timing is an issue, you have clever exam technique, okay, go for two versus two, and do it well, you'll still end up in level four, you might be towards the bottom, but you probably would end up with more marks than what you got, and trying to attain three versus three, very rushed, okay, so you got to focus on the question, uh, credit enables an entrepreneur to have their idea, uh, to attain a stock, and then pay for it over time, uh, it's going to be needed. Okay, she doesn't have enough money really uh, to do it otherwise. Organically, it'd be more difficult and uh, more slow. Uh, she's going to need access to credit here. She's going to make this transition from online to high street, the backwards transition that she kind of said herself. And uh, she's going to need to fund it. So, again, any three of those points could have been saying, Yes, this is important. This is why she needs credit. Okay, credit's vital for any entrepreneur, and then you need your however points. You could flip some of your green points. Uh, again, structure, you can mash it up, you can go agreeing, disagreeing, agreeing, disagreeing, agreeing, disagreeing, or you can do all three agreeing, then all three disagreeing. Okay, she's going to need collateral, and that's going to be an opportunity cost for that money. Uh, it could be an interesting one. You could go down the whole retain profit, minimizing risk, slower, better route. Uh, credit is not everything. Uh, current rate of interest is something to consider as well. And also, she attracted some venture capitalists there. I think she got 12.7 million uh, from somewhere, from someone, a business angel who believed in her. So uh, there's other lines beyond credit. Again, some, some of you guys mixed that up and thought that was actually credit. Uh, again, credit is money you don't have, it's from the bank. Uh, venture capitalists is someone giving you money in exchange for percentage of share of your business. Okay, very different things. So make sure you have a look over credit there. And obviously in your uh, paper, you need to have a clear recommendation for your 20 marker, short versus long term. I don't know if you guys brought that into your conclusions. Uh, so those are the great boundaries there. Again, I can't complain too much, uh, but I definitely think many of you guys easily could have done better. So again, have a good reflection there. Make the most of this learning experience. Otherwise, it's a waste of time doing this paper. Okay, and uh, we're going to push on here with the next few lessons into theme three. Uh, but the rest of the lesson, you're going to reflect upon your paper here and uh, get a head start on some extension tasks, setting the scene for what we're about to do, uh, but also uh, emphasizing to you guys what I want you guys to do over the summer. And right, that's that. I'm off to tune into the old EU referendum. To see if we've made a wise or a bad decision. Um, and if you're still listening, my prediction is that Northern Ireland will win on penalties and Will Grigg will burst into flames. All right.